had to learn to smile in order to get a job. I had to straighten up the way I walk. Because, you know, I've been cool. You know, you guys just met me last night. I'm really a cool dude. <laughs> I'm really cool. You know, I used, this, is how, you know when, this is how I used to walk in the day, real cool. You guys might even catch me strolling around here like this. Like somebody shot me in the leg. I've never been shot, you know. But I couldn't walk into corporate America like that. I had to straighten up the way I walk. So I went back to my study because the first job I got was in Beverly Hills, five-star restaurant, multimillionaires, celebrities coming in there. So I had to diffuse the prison stigma. I had to make that felony jacket disappear. So now I had to get my corporate swagger on and learn how, it took me a good long time to get that straight walk down. <laughs> See? How am I doing? The first investment I made was getting my grill fixed. $2,600, I got about maybe 5,000 in my mouth now. Look at that. I couldn't go in the corporate world with my grill jacked up. <laughs> Clean shave my face. Learn to smile. I couldn't go get a job like, hey, man, yeah, um, um, somebody told me you guys are hiring. Um, you know, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get a job. Y'all got any jobs right now? <laughs> I had to go in and say, good morning, sir. How are you? My name is Chef Jeff Henderson. I hear there's many great opportunities here. You know, it's, if you give me an opportunity, you know, I'm, I'll prove to you I'm capable and I'm worthy of this job. You know, I talked to him about my felony on my record. I said, you know, when I was a young guy, I made a lot of poor choices. But from those poor choices, I'm a better person today. Instead of a 90-day probation, sir, give me a 30-day probation. Let me show you what I can do. I had to build a brand. I had to transform myself from that to this. The eyewear had to change. I got about 15 pair of eyewear. I couldn't go in there with the cool glasses on like I had on last night. I had to put my studious corporate glasses on when I went in there. I just didn't go in and, and asking for a job. I, I did my homework like I did when I was a paper boy, studied my customer. When I was a drug dealer, studied my customers. When I was in prison, I studied my customers. How do you think I walked into the Bellagio, Caesars Palace, Rich Carlton, Hotel Bel Air? I just didn't walk in there as a homeboy and get a job. I did what you call a recon mission. I would study and stake out these properties before I went in. I would jam up workers coming out the back and say, hey, how you doing? My name is Jeff. I'm thinking about applying here for a job. You know, who's a jefe? Who's a big boss? Who's the executive chef? So they would give me information on them. I would Google them. I would research. I would ask questions. Find out his style, his temperament, what type of cuisine does he cook, where do he go to school at. Then I would go have dinner. When I couldn't afford a four, five, six course tasting, I would just buy a salad. Waiters hated me because I couldn't afford a tip. I'm right out of prison. So then I begin to study the menu. So then when, and, and jam up the hostess for the, the hotel politics. So I knew everything about this operation. I studied the, the strengths of the operation. I studied the weaknesses of the operation. So I knew when I got the question asked, how could I contribute to the success of this organization? Well, I knew the weaknesses was in leadership, team work, consistency and quality of food, and training. Well, I'm a great trainer. I have an eye for talent. I'm known in this industry from turning talent into perform high performance teams. That's what I do. I'm a motivator. So I take the, the guys in the workforce who nobody wants to deal with, and I tell them, you know what? You're smart, and you have potential. Just like the Wall Street boy told me I had. No one's ever told him that. And I begin to give them ownership in their workspace. They came to work earlier. They stayed later. They worked quicker and faster than everyone else, which impacted the bottom line which made the restaurant do well. That was a gift that I had. So I began to, to, to shape my brand and re-image myself and try to overcome. And I would, we call it, you know, we call people nosy when they're listening to other people's business and conversations. Well, on the streets, we call it ear hustling. 
Ear hustling is when you're tuning in to somebody. And I would tune in because I was trying to improve my vocabulary. So I had to understand the conversations and things that I, I, I had to be able to do in order to get in. So I didn't know anything about golf and, you know, I didn't know much about, you know, what was going on in the po political scene at the time. So, you know, I had, to, I, had to, I had to figure these things out. So what it boiled down to at the end of the day, before we wrap this up, is the gift. Discovering your gift. Now, I love golf. A lot of us are passionate. You know, we say, I'm, this person's very passionate about what he does. I love golf. And I'm passionate about golf, but I suck at golf. I suck. I cannot play. So distinguishing your passions from your gift. So I stopped following my passions and following my gift. And when you know what your gift is, this is how you distinguish the gift from passion. This is how you distinguish what you were born to do versus what you like to do. Whatever that you do with the least amount of effort at a very high level is a gift. Cooking was a gift. This is a, this is a basic peach cobbler that I made extraordinary using a donut peach soup poached in H2O with cinnamon, nutmeg, for 15 minutes and peel the skin off, pop the seed out the bottom, put it inside of a Bentley plate, which is a burner dough plate that costs $125, presentation. Set it right there in the middle, put that scoop of French vanilla bean ice cream, that little mint right there in the top, and took that peach water and poured it around there. Now I have a very high-end dish, but traditionally doesn't look like that. Everything about me had to say brand, brand, brand when I walked out of prison. Everything had to be extraordinary. How I walked, how I talked. And remember, black man, buffed up when I came out of prison. I had to quit lifting weights. Because you know, you can always tell a guy who's been to prison. They don't have no butt, no legs. They just do arms and chest so they can look macho in a prison yard so nobody doesn't bother them. I had no ass, no legs, and I was like this. So I had to quit lifting weights. I had to come down humble myself. And this is how I was able to discover the gift. Writing is a gift. Speaking became a gift. Because at the age of seven, they called me little hardhead. I talked too much. Oh, here come Jeffrey and that mouth of his. See, I was a little boy who took the radio loose because I thought people were in it. I asked questions. I wanted to know why. How come those people get to live in those neighborhoods? How come they got the big multi-million dollar homes and they go on vacations with their families? What do they know? I don't know. This is how I learn. I identify the strengths in people and the weaknesses so I don't make those mistakes. So if you have a gift that I'm passionate about and you're in a space in your life and your American dream mirrors my American dream, I need to know what homeboy knows. What type of education does he have? What relationship does he build? How does he operate? What time does he get up in the morning? How did he craft this pathway to the American dream? Just like the drug dealers. I said, I don't want to just be a drug dealer on the corner and say, hey, man, I got a $20, 20 bag of cocaine. If I was going to sell drugs, I want to sell them big. I want to go down to Columbia. I just didn't want to be cooking for anybody in prison. I want to cook for the rich guys in prison so they can put money on my books. When I came out of prison, I said, I don't want to be a breakfast hash cook working at a, a, a low-end a diner. I wanted to go high-end. I wanted to go amongst the best. And I knew in order to become a, a, a decent cook, a great cook, a creative cook, and chef, I had to go amongst the best chefs. So I strategically picked my path to chef them. Rich Carlton, Hotel Bel Air, Lara Mataj, both Five Star Five Diamond, Caesar's Palace, Bellagio. Now, when I came here in the year 2000, I just didn't come to Vegas to get a job. They said, it, you ain't, it ain't gonna happen, Jeff. Felon, no culinary school, you're not getting in. Came to Vegas in the year 2000, everybody in this town turned me down for a job, except Caesar's Palace. They had a homeboy who was the head man, Italian, from the Bronx. Hair slicked back, big buff guy, I didn't intimidate him because I had my corporate look, right? So first thing he asked, I said, Henderson, yes, sir. He says, you ever kill anybody? I said, no, sir. Can you cook? I said, yes, sir. 
So I prepared for him six courses in 60 minutes. They hired me on the spot. And within three months, I became the first African-American chef de cuisine, which is equal to executive chef of a restaurant at Caesars. See, I used to say the first African-American, I say the first convicted felon, the first homeboy. <laughs> but I came here for the Bellagio, the Bellagio, the big B, the Bentley of them all. That's where I wanted to work because all the famous chefs worked there. Bentley's parked out front, a high-end clientele, because I knew if I got a job at the Bellagio, I could learn great service, better customer skills, management, how to really understand and impact the bottom line with the PLs, P&Ls, and be around the right people in the right places. It took me three and a half years in this town before I was able to penetrate the Bellagio and had to change my walk three times <laughs> to get into the Bellagio. And once I got into Bellagio, four months later, I was named the first convicted felon executive chef <laughs> in the history of the Bellagio. Yeah. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.